They tell you you shouldn't look directly at the noon sun. You'll hurt your eyes, maybe even go blind. The brightness of the sun is estimated at a billion nits. Nits sounds like a cute name for tiny insects, but is a technical word to measure luminance. Legend goes, famous YouTuber Galileo went blind looking at a solar eclipse. Today, NASA advises you to wear a shade of 12 or higher if you want to look at a solar eclipse. Typically, health professionals recommend 13 or 14, but the lowest possible shade level you can get away with, which might still be uncomfortable for many, is shade 12. Since we're cinematographers, this is an ND optical density of 4.5. By the way, Galileo didn't go blind because he looked at an eclipse. That's just an urban legend. The real reason was Instagram. ND 4.5 reduces all that bright light to about 30,000 nits. We're talking about light directly from the light source. If you want to measure incident light, the unit to use is lux. 30,000 nits translates to about 100,000 lux rounded out, which is what we can measure on a noon day. I'm going to be using nits instead of lux because cameras and our eyes also see specular highlights and other light sources in a scene. So, the brightest we can see without damaging our eyes permanently is about 30,000 nits. Anything above 10,000 nits can get uncomfortable though. How about the lowest level? Depends. How dirty do you want this to get? Our eyes can detect a luminance as low as a millionth of a nit. Some photographers don't use nits. They measure light and dynamic range in stops of light. Every stop up is double the light. The difference between 30,000 nits and one millionth of a nit is about 34 stops of light. If you consider the sun as well, now we're looking at about 50 stops of light in total. However, for the purposes of this video, we just need to be concerned about 34 stops. When we talk about low light, we're more concerned with how light reflects off objects. The blacker the object, the less light is reflected. For example, the darkest known substance right now, Vantablack, absorbs 99.965% of the light. If you were to take it out on a moonless night with just starlight, it would appear totally black. Objects like black shirts or hair would reflect a lot more light, especially if you didn't wash them both. Going by just starlight, you're looking at a total dynamic range of about 30 stops of light. That's as much as any cinema camera needs to see. It's a difference of a billion to one. However, we can't see all of it at the same time. If you're late to enter a movie theater, the screen is so bright you can't see whose toes you're stepping on. Once your eyes adjust to the brightness, you can see your victims and pretend not to look in their direction. If an annoying kid were to point a flashlight straight at your eyes right then, that's just karma. The eye adjusts according to the scene, and that's why we need a dynamic contrast ratio or dynamic range. Our eyes use rods and cones, or both, and is entirely different from how a camera operates. However, here's a fun question. Can any camera see 30 stops of light? Assume you fix a camera at its base ISO and a fixed shutter speed and only vary the aperture. Let's assume this camera can record 14 stops of dynamic range in one exposure. If the lens used has an aperture range of say T1.3 to T22, that's 9 extra stops. So you're getting about 23 stops of total coverage. If you are allowed to shift the ISO 2 stops in each direction without penalty, you get about 27 stops. You can increase this further with ND filters towards the bright end. As you might have realized, if you allow the camera to adjust, practically any modern camera can reach human eye levels of total dynamic range. But that won't satisfy us. We shift the goalposts and claim dynamic range is what the eye can see in one go. Why? Anybody who has shot with cameras that can only record 12 or 13 stops knows it's not enough. Our eyes are great at adjusting on the fly. We intuitively understand our dynamic range is better than these cameras. How does that happen? Our eye has three modes of operation. Photopic vision is the vision of the eye under well-lit conditions. It gives us the best color, image resolution, and temporal resolution. Photopic vision is purely cone-based. It kicks in from about 10 nits and up. That's about 13 stops in total. Mesopic vision is a combination of photopic vision and scotopic vision that kicks in in low-light situations like nighttime, outdoor, and street lighting conditions. This vision requires both cones and rods. Mesopic levels range from approximately from 0.01 to 3 nits. That's about 8 stops. How do you know when it's mesopic? 
you still see color and things are still relatively sharp. Scotopic vision is the vision of the eye under really low light conditions. It is almost monochromatic in nature and is purely rod based. The image is not very sharp. This range is about 9 stops. In general day to day viewing we know we don't see monochromatic light. Color and sharpness are intact. So we should probably disregard scotopic vision if you're trying to match the dynamic range of a camera with the human eye. This means the best estimate we can arrive at is the sum of the photopic and mesopic aspects of vision which accounts for most of our daily activities. This is about 21 stops. Incidentally 20 stops is also the contrast range of rods in our eyes. Now here's the thing, even if our eyes see less dynamic range our perception is that we see more. The moment we shift focus our eye adjusts and we feel like we're seeing extra. This is what a camera needs to match however. And in that unlevel playing field a camera must reach about 21 stops of dynamic range to really satisfy most eyes. Unfortunately we can't test these things accurately. Your camera can record an image at a certain exposure but your eye will compensate continuously to fool you. Especially if you have specular highlights in the shot. That's why we're okay with seeing images on a 100 nit cinema screen or maybe even a 500 nit home HDR TV or a bright mobile phone. The highlights can be reduced and we can tolerate that. We're adjusting physically and psychologically. What we can't tolerate is when the scene as a whole doesn't display the right contrast. Because this isn't how we see the world. We do understand the relative brightness and darkness of things. We're not fooled when someone artificially cranks up the shadows or lowers the highlights a tad too much. Another problem with testing is that no two people will agree on what they're seeing. Our eyes are different, color perception is subjective and our priorities are different. Depending on how you lean, you might look at a woman or a man or… is that a mustang? No wait, what's that? You're on your own now, bye.